Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Welcome to Okoy Church of God for our Wednesday night service. We come expecting the Lord for great things today. Let us stand and invite the Lord's presence into the house tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for to come before your presence again, before your throne again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there is pleasures forevermore. We pray today that you would move in our hearts, that you would move in our lives, that your Shekinah glory of God would overshadow this place, that your angels of God encamp around about us, and the mighty wind of the Holy Ghost would blow in this house tonight. Father God, we desire to hear your voice for you to speak to our hearts and speak to our lives tonight. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Just have your way tonight. Meet every need in the congregation tonight. Those that need healing, let's just let your healing power to flow today. Let us not to leave this place the same tonight. And Father God, we give you the thanks and the praise and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing and let's worship the Lord this night. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. Yes, I love the Lord and I won't take it back. Cause he's been so good to me.
to the rock of my salvation, a rock to lean on in times of trouble. Hallelujah. Where do I go when there's nobody else to turn to? Who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? And who do I lean on? foundation stable I go to the rock I know he's able I go to the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone that the builders rejected I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me when the earth all around me is sinking sand, a price of solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. Oh, when the earth all around me is sinking sand, I'll price the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I go? When the storms of life are threatening, who do I turn to? When the winds of sorrow blow, and is there a refuge? In the time of tribulation, I go to the rock, I know he's able, I go to the rock, I go to the rock of my salvation, I go to the stone that the builders rejected, I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand On Christ the solid rock I stand When I need a shelter, when I need a friend I go to the rock Where do I go? When the storms of life are threatening Who do I turn to? When the winds of sorrow blow, and is there a refuge? A refuge? In the time of tribulation, I go to the rock, I know he's able, I go to the rock. Well, I go to the rock of my salvation, I go to the stone that the builders rejected, I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. Oh, when the earth all around 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, is that your prayer tonight? Amen. That he'll open the eyes of our heart and of our life and of our families that we can see who Jesus is tonight. Amen. You may be seated his presence tonight. What a joy it is to be back in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Amen. I'm glad he's still a God of a midweek service. Delighted that you are here. Delighted that Jesus is with us. Delighted that I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. My sins have been forgiven. I've been washed anew. I want to remind you about tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Our ladies will join for a time of Bible study and dessert in the fellowship hall. That will begin at 7 o'clock, chapter number 9 of Contagious Joy. And uh, wives, I mean uh, husbands, you need to babysit tomorrow night. You can even cook dinner. Your wife would appreciate it tomorrow night. And allow her to come to Bible study at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening here at the main campus. And our service at Spirit Life will be happening simultaneously at 7 o'clock. And, and then Friday night, we've got a few calls or a few messages that a few of you are interested in going over to uh, Plant City on Friday night. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to wing it. Amen. I don't like doing things that way. It gets me in all kind of trouble. But we're going to do it that way this time. Amen. So uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. We need a little bit over an hour to get down there, probably about an hour and a half. And I'm not sure about traffic, so we're going to try to leave here close to 5 o'clock, okay? And 5, 5, 15, 5, 15, that big white bus is pulling out of here, amen? And so if you're wanting to go Friday night, just be here at 5 o'clock, 5, 15. Or if you're, on, if you're running a minute late, you can call me, and I'll, I might wait on you for a minute. You're running two minutes late, I'm going to leave you here, amen? If you, 5, 15. So if you're one of those that run late, just tell yourself you've got to be here at 4.30. That way you'll be here by 5, amen? And uh, we want to leave about 5.15. I think that should give us plenty of time. I, I don't know if I'm going to be the one driving or whoever, but the van will be what's going. Um, I'm supposed to be there at 6 o'clock for another event, and I, I can't drive the van and be there at 6 if we leave here at 5.15. So I'll figure that out the next day or two. So uh, if you want to drive the van, it'll leave at 5.15. We will drive there for church, or the van will drive there to church. Uh, probably have church. Probably stop and get something quick. So plan for that. And, uh, and then head on back to Okoe. We w it won't be a nice sit-down restaurant. It'll be probably something fast food, grab it and go, something of that nature. And if you don't make a big, big mess in the van, we might even let you bring a drink on the van. Um, I'll get one of these young guys or gals to clean it out for me. Amen. Detention is a wonderful thing. Amen. So... And so, uh, but that'll be, that'll be a Friday at 5. We'll need to leave at 5.15, okay? Please don't call me and say, Pastor, it's 5.15. I'm 20 minutes away. Will you wait? I love you in Jesus' name, but I will tell you no. You can catch us on the 429. They've raised the speed limit as of Saturday, which we're leaving Friday. So that won't help you Friday night unless you break the law. Um, but we're going to leave here at 5.15, and I drive down there, see what we can get into, and then we'll come back. I mean, that'll be Friday night. Saturday, Saturday, and then uh, Sunday's church all over again. Sunday night after church, let me mention this to all of our students. Sunday night after church, we have scheduled an informational meeting for the Southeastern Youth Conference. If you remember, last year we borrowed the van from Vineland Road, and we went, and uh, we had a wonderful time. I went with you and drove that big old thing there and back and thought, dear God, get me back home quickly. And uh, we had about 32 people, I think it was, that went last year and uh, had a phenomenal time. And so some of you have said you want to A, go back, and some others have said we want to go. So I've made, I've made preparations for you. We have booked enough rooms. I'm looking for Rebecca to confirm this. We've booked enough rooms for 50 people. 50. And I have talked with 
tour bus company and uh, for the right price they will shuttle us there and shuttle us back in style bathroom on board can you say amen and, uh, and we will uh, so we we think and I'm going to share some of this th- you're the Wednesday night crowd so sometimes you get things before the Sunday morning folks do and uh, but Sunday night we're going to meet and talk about that and uh, we've got some wiggle room in some of this but um, I think two years ago they paid a hundred bucks a kid to go that included your hotel and the ride up there I think last year we got down to seventy five dollars a kid I think this year if we can put it back up to a hundred and um, if we can get enough people to go that will include the tour bus okay We've just worked out some pretty good deals with those folks, and, and it's a connection here with some folks that we have, and and uh, and we've talked to the hotel people already. And so we think if we get enough folks that we can get you there and back, leave on Friday morning, get back on Sunday afternoon, probably during the evening service is how it was last year, and uh, we will drive up Friday morning, and we'll stop and have lunch in Tallahassee, drive on to Enterprise or wherever we're going, and have church Friday night, church Saturday morning, church Saturday night, get up Sunday morning, come back to the house and have church on the bus. Amen. And so uh, we're hoping to do that. We're taking a group regardless it looks like. And uh, some of you adults have mentioned going but didn't want to ride in a 15-passenger van with uh, all those kids. I don't blame you. I don't want to ride in it either, but I have to. But um, we've got it worked out tentatively, again, depending on how many of you want to go. I heard from students last year that said they want to go back and bring their parents with them and And uh, I've heard from students just across the board wanting to go. So we're going to try to make that happen. We're trying our best to to offer that. Uh, But you'll need to be at the information meeting when kind of get an idea of who's interested. And um, 100 bucks for three days, two nights, three church services. All of your meals, your your meal after all the church services is free. So it's very little food cost. We'll eat breakfast at the hotel. So it's almost... Once you pay your, you know, your room and travel, it's almost no other money needed. Now, I know how kids are. They always want to go to Walmart and buy junk food. So we'll make a Walmart run. And, uh, but I don't think you can beat 100 bucks. And I've encouraged some of my students from school um, to go with us. And uh, something I think it will do them really well to just get away from life and let Jesus talk to them through that kind of an event. So we're going to meet. You say, Pastor, it's only January. Yeah, but March will be here before you know it. And Easter will be here before you know it. And Christmas will be here before you know it. So we're trying to stay ahead of this thing. One thing that I've committed to staff this year is I I, I just, you may never know it, but sometimes we run right up to the last minute, and it drives me crazy. So my New Year's resolution, I don't believe in them, but my New Year's resolution was to not wait to the 11th hour. Maybe we can move it up to the 9th hour or something like that. So we're going to start early. Rebecca, we did book enough rooms for 50 people. Is that what, I, what we did? I mentioned SEYC. I know you just walked in. Okay, 48, 52, somewhere around there. So we can let go of some if we need to. I love to call them back and say I need some more. And, uh, and I know it's going to pull you out of a Sunday morning service, but we'll, we'll, we'll still, Jesus will be okay with that if you're in church. If you stay home, that's a different story. But if you want to go to SEYC, Brother Greg Atkins, he was with us last January. Just a phenomenal individual. His whole group is phenomenal. And uh, you don't want to miss that. So we're just telling you early. That will be Sunday night. I'm not sure why I shared that with you, except all the young people are here tonight. And they've heard it from Pastor Rebecca now for a week or two, but I want them to hear it from me. We're going, so you need to go ahead and start selling your candy and making your cupcakes and whatever you got to do, and let's get some money raised. And um, and adults, if you want to sponsor a kid, let me. I just feel led to say this: if you're not going to go, you know you're not going to go, but you could help me with a kid or two or three, or a portion of a kid or two. If you'll let me know, um, we, we're going to have kids. We're going to have to help. That's always the way it is. And uh, if you know you can't go, but you can give me fifty bucks or hundred bucks to cover a kid, do that. And, um, and uh, I'll make sure it goes to a student that needs to go. Uh, we can handpick those students and, and get them there. All right, junior ushers, usherettes, junior praise team, uh, musicians, all of those people that are working for Jesus tonight, come and um, only send me the ushers. I can take up a good offering, okay? If they're going to take up a lousy offering, set them back down, find me some more. We want the good ushers tonight. All right, all right. We got three mercers on the board, so that'll be good. And Mr. Odom on this side? All right. Mr. Odom's an usher tonight. Hallelujah. All right. Glad Zach's up here with me. I'd be the only boy on stage. Thank you, Zach. Amen. It's lonely up here sometimes, all these women. They do a good job. 
All right, you're ready. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for our students. Thank you for all they do for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have tonight to give of our tithes and of our offerings. Pray that you'll bless the gift, multiply it for the intended use. Lord, just let us fall in love with Jesus all over again, and we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Christ, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need to hold on, just use what you've got. It's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. It's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. It's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. It's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Aren't you thankful for the faith we have in Jesus tonight? Amen. All right, go and dismiss all of our students and teenagers out to classes tonight. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and ask that you uh, remember uh, those that have sent in needs to our church. And it is good to see Sister Pat back in church. She was out Sunday morning, Sunday night. Brother Rex was out Sunday night. Good to see you back on the platform. Amen. We miss her when she's not here. Miss you when you're not here. And I want to just ask God to be with you and to strengthen you. Let's go with spoken request over on this side tonight. Any spoken requests? Brother Ken. Sister Joyce, yes, yes, remember these requests tonight. Sister Jane, let's remember this, let's remember Mike tonight, yes. Any more over on this side? Yes, God knows the need there. Sister Renfro? Yes. Had her procedure yesterday. Also, Sister Debbie, she sent me a message that she's not in tonight. She's not well. And uh, she may be watching, but let's remember Sister Debbie tonight as well. Amen. Right. Any over on this side tonight? Sister Tanya? Yes. Yes, let's remember that. If you didn't hear, two kids were hit on a bicycle yesterday in front of Citrus Elementary, right here in Ocoee, and they, they know who the driver is. They've identified all of that. But uh, one is okay, and one is still critical, last I heard. So right here at the door, folks. So let's, let's, let's pray for them. Amen. Any more over on Sister Myra? Sister Sasser, yes. God knows the need there. Anymore. Let's 
remember. Yes, yes. The one out in Alabama, is that correct? Okay, yes, let's remember this brother. And her sister Lily, her blood sugar dropped real low tonight. Her daughter's with her. Let's remember Sister Lily tonight. And I do ask that you continue to remember uh, Brother Cushman. I've mentioned uh, Elder Cushman, Pastor Cushman, his grandson Ryan. And I did get an update earlier today, I think it was, that um, his, his, they're seeing some improvement, um, blood pressure and things are seem to be a little bit better. Still got a long ways to go. And so I just ask that you continue to remember Ryan in your prayers. And some have asked about the two-and-a-half-year-old little boy, Isaac, uh, Pastor Jason's boy up in Tennessee, and he is officially out of ICU. So we've got a long ways to go, but uh, I'm hoping they can get out of there in a few days and uh, continue some treatment at home. So I ask that you remember both of those pastors' families and that God will be with them and strengthen them. And then my heart was touched um, as I read something from the Church of God State Office in Alabama earlier this week. I don't know this individual, but from what I have understood, one of their pastors, they were in for a a state council meeting and uh, he uh, became violently ill there and has ended up having a stroke I think it was and uh, he is at the hospital and they're requesting prayers across the Church of God family uh, uh, from what I can gather he appears to be one of those pillars long-term people there in Alabama and uh, they're requesting prayer for him and his name does slip me but God knows exactly who he is and uh, he's part of our family so let's remember him tonight as we pray, as we pray as well. Amen. Any more tonight that I may have missed? Sister Helen? Yes. Yes, Pastor Kevin, uh, aunt, his mother, sister passed away. Brendan called me Monday and said, we're leaving, headed to Indiana, I think it was. And uh, they drove the 20 hours up for the funeral and are driving back. And they'll be back, I guess, sometime late tomorrow. So I ask that you remember uh, Pastor Kevin and, and Brendan through this time as well. I saw one more, Sister Katrina. I serve a God that's able, amen, able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think, and I know some of us can think ourselves right through our healing and say, God, I know, I think it, I know you can touch me, and if he can do more than we could ever imagine or think, imagine what he really can do in our lives, so let's, let's have that faith, let's use it tonight, ask God to, to help us, any more spoken requests that I may have missed? Any unspoken tonight, let it be signified. I, I've kind of been troubled with this unspoken prayer request. Somebody challenged me a, a few, not challenged me, I read something that challenged me. And, uh, you know, when, when we believe, when we, uh, when we agree in prayer, we're agreeing that God's going to move on the need. And if Sister Wendy has a need in her life for healing, and I know about that need, and we agree, it says if we agree on anything... What is bound in heaven shall be bound in earth. And you know, you know the scriptures there. And, but I had a reading something challenged me and says, how can I agree with someone on a prayer request that I don't know if it's even a right prayer request? And I, I, it just kind of struck me a little bit there. So I'm agreeing with you on your unspoken prayer request. I'm agreeing with you on that, trusting that it's God's divine will and you're praying for God's perfect will in your life. Because for somebody to pray something outside of the Word of God, I can't agree with that. And see, I don't want us to, this is a quick lesson, I don't want us to just flippantly say, I'll agree with you and then unspoken. I'm going to clarify that. I'm going to agree with you and then unspoken prayer request as long as it does not contradict or pray outside of the Word of God. Say, Pastor, why are you worried with that? I've heard some strange things being requested of at prayer time. Not so much here. But you go out there and you listen and you watch people and they'll pray things that are directly against the Word of God. It's just a little nugget. It's just been kind of gnawing on me the last couple of weeks. Say, God, I, I don't want to be so quick to say I agree. 
I want to clarify and I want to put a, put, a, put a preface on it. I'll agree as long as it does not contradict the Word of God. Because this is the Word of God. And we will stand before God one day. And I don't ever want to pray amiss or pray anything that is outside of the will and the, and the Word of God in my life. And I don't think for the most part we do. But I want to challenge you. If you're quick to say, let's, you know, unspoken, let's do it. Let's do it. But, be, but keep your guard up. We live in a day when the enemy would do whatever he could to get himself in the side of our lives. And I say, God, keep me protected. Keep a hedge around me. And don't let me spend time praying for something that's against the will of God. Let me pray for something that is in line and in tune with the will of God for our lives. And I believe if we do that, it'll be all right. Amen? Amen. I believe God's able. Now, I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray for you. And I believe in God's heard your cry and you've prayed about it. And I believe God's going to help us tonight. Can you say amen? Amen. Stand with me if you will. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 17 after we pray. So allow us to pray together. And if you finish praying before we do, uh, you just may want to put your thumb on 1 Samuel chapter number 17. But let's pray and ask God to move on these requests. Father, I love you tonight. And I thank you for the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, when I gave my life to you, I gave everything to you, Lord. Everything that I am, everything that I'm not, Lord, my life is in your hands. I pray tonight that you'll lead us and guide us and direct us. Lord, I pray for every spoken request in this house tonight. God, I pray for healing. I pray for direction. I pray for comfort and peace. And Lord, as I heard the request made known tonight, Lord, I could imagine what they're facing. And I can understand, Lord, the dynamics. And Lord, I can, I, I can empathize, Lord, and with that family and sympathize and with their need. And, and Lord, I pray tonight and from the oldest to the youngest in this house, and God, that every request that's been made known and has been made known, God, to you for one purpose Lord that you will move upon it and that heaven will stand at attention and that an answer will be given and Lord and all the praise and all the honor and all the glory will be given to you Lord I love you tonight Lord and I would not even want to try to do life without you as my Lord and as my Savior Lord I pray for those tonight that have requested prayer for healing and Lord by your stripes we are healed and tonight our faith is activated and we ask God that you'll move and minister in those requests. Lord, I pray for family dynamics. Lord, I know there are needs in this church. God, people that need direction. and People that need understanding. and Lord, about family decisions and family events. Lord, and I pray tonight that the peace that passes all understanding will overshadow their life and give them direction, Lord, on what needs to be done. Lord, I pray for salvation. and Lord, our lost friends and our lost loved ones. Lord, if there's the greatest need that we have in mankind, it is the need to be saved. Lord, and I pray tonight that conviction will fall. I pray that convicting power will get a hold of their lives. I pray, God, that before it's too late, our friends and our families will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm not careful when I pray tonight. I'm asking God that whatever it takes to see our loved ones saved and on their way to heaven, God, God, you do that in their life. Lord, there's nothing greater than a man and a woman being a right relationship with you. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you'll get a hold of them. Get a hold of my brothers tonight. Lord, whatever it takes, get a hold of their life. Lord, will they realize their need for a Savior. Move not only in my family, but in every family represented on this grounds tonight. I pray, Lord, that the power of the Holy Ghost will move and minister in their life. Lord, I pray for peace, and I pray for comfort. I pray for the presence of God to be with them. Lead us and guide us and direct us tonight. Lord, and let everything that we do be done to bring honor and glory unto you. Strengthen us tonight. Open up our hearts. Lord, they receive your word. Open up our minds and our ears to hear from you tonight, Lord, and we will forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray tonight. And everybody said amen. And amen. First Samuel chapter number 17. First Samuel, first Samuel chapter number 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter number 17. One verse of scripture for you. I say one verse. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll do one verse. I'll let you sit down here and I'll preach it all. Amen. First Samuel 17, chapter 17, verse number 10. First Samuel 17, verse number 10. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel. That's fighting words right there. I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. 1 Samuel 17, verse 10. Goliath speaking. And the Philistine said, that old tall scoundrel of a guy, Goliath. He said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together together you may be seated in the presence of the lord tonight for a little while the lord helping me the holy ghost anointing me going to preach to us on one of those phrases out of that verse verse 10 give me a man give me a man now you've all heard the story most of you have heard the story of David and Goliath we realize uh, that this popular 3,000 or so year old story of David and Goliath is loaded with contemporary applications uh, it's loaded with things for our life today I mean there's nothing better than realizing when you're in the middle of a battle and the enemy's up against you that all it takes is one man in God and we've sung it and we've shouted on it oh we've sung the verse the battle's not mine said little David we, we realize the concept there there's so much in this passage that we can pull from on David and Goliath and I'm going to try to focus on that one phrase tonight that says give me a man the way of the world today is to go with the way of the Goliaths it seems the bigger they, the, the party is, the bigger the group is, uh, the bigger the association is, the more people going after them. And I say, Lord, there are some groups and some associations and some large events that I don't want to be a part of because they're full of the devil. The devil's right in the middle of it. And if that's what they call Goliath, I don't want to be a part of it at all. Amen. We gotta realize that the world today seems to want to go the way of Goliath and seems to want to give little notice or no notice at all to, to the Davids of this world. And after all, Goliath or what? They're big. They're tall. They're boisterous. They're powerful. They think they know it all. They think they have all the answer. They think they can control man. They think that they are successful. But I'm reminded of this 3,000 year old story in 1 Samuel 17 that Goliath thought he was all that. Goliath thought he could not fall. Goliath thought that he could not be defeated. But I'm glad tonight that Goliath's views are not God's views. Amen. I'm glad tonight that the way Goliath saw it, the way Goliath Goliath thought it was going to happen is not the way that it ended and, and thank God we've got the book and we've read the whole story amen God did not share this view God did not share the view of Goliath I'm going to tell you God didn't even share the view of some of those on the Israel side that day either because the Israel side some of them had already gave up some of them had already decided they were going to duck tail and run and we're going to look at David and how he showed up in that event and what it means when I say give me a man to do what God has called us to do but God did not share that view with them and often today God will surprise us with what he wants to do I can tell you of a truth I never believe in my heart that when, when David went down to the, to the battle that day that David thought he would kill anybody much less Goliath I can tell you by reading from Scripture that I don't think too many of those folks on David's side supposedly thought he could handle Goliath either. And I'll run through them. His brothers uh, and King Saul and all of those questioned, uh, questioned if David was really able to do anything about it. But I love it when God shows up. And I love it when God shows up and makes it without a doubt that it was God and God only. And even if man wanted to try to take credit for it, they couldn't because it just had to be God. Had to be God. Number one tonight, Goliath's challenge. Goliath's challenge. Verse number 10 specifically is the challenge that I want to look at from this, from this giant, from this big guy that we read about and your kids learn about in vacation Bible school and Sunday school and children's church. That Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel. But then he said, give me a man. Goliath's challenge called for a man 
Goliath called for a man to make a decision. God did not ever intend for David to fight the battle alone. Amen. God knew what was going to happen. God doesn't intend for you and I to fight the battle alone. Goliath said, give me a man. He called for a man. That man would be a representative for the king of Israel. That man would be a representative of the armies of Israel. And that red, that man would even represent Jehovah, if you will, because they had realized that Israel was God's chosen people. And if you you say you're God's chosen people then you better be ready to do what God's called you to do Goliath stands out there and says give me a man you know how it is when you're in a setting like this and somebody needs to volunteer for something all of us want to raise our hands the first time no we don't we'll wait and see who raises their hand it was a, I guarantee you it was the same way that night or that day but see God had been working on David just like God's been working on some of you. God's been making you to do things and to understand things and to lead a life that you thought you never... God's been working on you behind the scenes. God had been working on David and Goliath says, give me, give me a man. Now listen to this. Often men must make decisions and often we must win battles in life and those battles in our life become decisions and they become victories for our family. What do you mean, Pastor? When I put my foot down and say, we're going to serve the Lord and the Lord only, that is a battle that I'm choosing to win over the enemy. When I say, no, ma'am, no, sir, we won't have that in my house. We don't operate that way. We don't live that way. And you're not going to do it. I am winning a battle of victory over the devil. And because of that, I'm setting an expectation of what needs to happen from that point forward. And when you make your mind up that you're not going to bow down to the devil anymore. And when you make your mind up that you're not going to do the things of the world. You are, in, in, in essence, you are having a victory over a battle. And that victory over that battle becomes something that is represented in your family and in your church. And in the area of which you live. And Goliath knew if he could get a man on that battlefield. And Goliath knew if he could conquer that man. That he could conquer the entire nation of Israel. Because let's face it, we all join together tonight. We're going to pick somebody to go fight our battle for us. We're going to look for somebody that can run. We're going to look for somebody that can carry a sword. We're going to look for somebody that's, that's muscular. We're going to look for somebody that maybe has experience. I voted myself out of all of it already. Amen. You on your own tonight. No. We're going to, we're going to as an army, we're going to select somebody that can we think can do the battle for us. If we were going to go fight a physical battle, we look around this congregation and there's some that we know that they just can't go fight. Maybe they're aged or maybe they're, 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 they're at, a, at a point in their life when it would not be conducive for them. Maybe it would be people like Pastor Ricky who would be willing to go take a spear for us. Wouldn't you? I'm going to pick the person best suited. And Goliath knew that if they followed his thought pattern, that they would choose a man that would represent them. And if he could conquer that man, he's got all the rest of them whipped. Because if Pastor Ricky has chosen to fight the battle, if we believe he's the best one on the, on the, on the pews tonight to fight the battle, and he's going to step out there and fight Goliath, if Goliath takes him down and he was the best we got, the rest of us are all in trouble. He says, give me a man. Why? Because he, he believed. If I can get whoever they send, they'll send their best. And if I can get whoever they send, it won't be a problem getting the rest of them. You know, the enemy's the same way in your life. He'll fight you in the area of life that you're struggling the most. And he says, if I can just get them in that area, then I can take them out with everything else that I don't want to do with them. And we got to realize we're not fighting the battle by ourselves we got to realize whether it be Pastor Ricky on this front line or whether it be me on this front line, we're not fighting the battle by ourselves. Goliath says, give me a man. Because Goliath knew if he could win that battle, he was winning the battle not only 
over the Pastor Ricky of my story. But he's winning the battle over all the families of Pastor Ricky. He's winning the battle of all of the friends and all of the churches uh, and the congregation that Pastor Ricky's. He, the, the, the Goliath knew if he could win the battle over this man, he could do whatever he wanted to with the children of Israel. So his challenge was just send me a man. Send me a man. Now, that was Goliath's challenge. Let's look at David for a little bit tonight. David was also challenged by three individuals, or three groups. David was challenged by his brothers. Don't you love family? Oh, I just love family. We all get together and sing Kumbaya all the time. I told a group of boys that, it's been a few weeks ago, there are twin boys at our school. They're, uh, I don't know, third or fourth grade. They're twin boys. They're different as night and day. And they look different and act different, and they are different. And, and they were at play, uh, PE one Friday afternoon, and they're on different teams of whatever sport it was. And I noticed one over in the corner kind of pouting. I'm thinking, what's wrong with him this time? And so he comes to the bus, and I said, what's your problem? He won't let me play, and he hurt me. I'm thinking, who is he? I said, who was it? It wasn't he called. I said, that's your brother. He said, I don't care. He still hurt me. He said, we're on different teams, and he shouldn't have done it. I said, look, if y'all don't behave, I'll make I'll give each other a big old kiss right there on the cheek. I said, I can do that. Y'all are brothers. I said, can you do that? Nobody else. David was challenged by his own family. What do you mean, Pastor? Listen to what his brother said. I believe it's verse number 28. I believe it's verse 28. Eldest brother, this is what he said. Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou, hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Whom hast thou left those few sheep with in the wilderness? His own brother began to challenge him. His own brother said, You are the least in importance in this family. And you are supposed to be on the back side of nowhere, taking care, and I love the word, the way the Spirit of God wrote it, those few sheep it don't matter if there was one sheep or a hundred sheep they still need a shepherd amen but for some reason this brother according to the scriptures and according to the spirit of God asked him whom hast thou left with those few sheep in the wilderness it could be said that David was challenged by his brothers that David was challenged by ridicule they ridiculed him for not being where they thought he should be. They ridiculed him and saying, you need to go back to the, to the field, back to the wilderness, and you, David, need to go be with those few sheep. Who did you leave those sheep with? Showing that they didn't think David had any importance at all, much less any importance on the battlefield. I hate it when the devil does that to people, but he does it all the time. He'll make you feel like you're no importance. He'll make you feel like your opinion doesn't matter. He'll make it feel like that when you pray, your, your prayers hit the ceiling and bounce back to the ground. He'll make you think you're the least of your family, the least of your church, the least of your community. And by ridicule, he'll allow you or make you want to crawl up in a hole and do nothing else for Jesus. David is an example tonight that we're going to look at for a while. David was challenged by ridicule by his own family members. Now, I, you know, I, I come from a, my wife says we're a very loud family, and we probably are. The happier we get when we're together, the louder we get. If you're listening outside of our windows, you would think by the time the night falls that we're having just arguments for one another unless you're really listening to the words. Because it's not that we're arguing, just the, the more excited we get and the more involved we get, the louder we get. And it's exciting to be at my mom's house at midnight sometimes. Amen? We're just all into it. But you would think your family would never ridicule you, especially if you're doing something for the Lord. But can I tell you, your family sometimes is the one that's the hardest on you especially if they're not of the family of faith. They'll say things that they really don't mean. They'll say things that are hurtful. They'll say things that, that, that from the human side, you want to lash out to them and you want to handle business. Now, my brothers are both younger than I am, but I remind them I'm still the oldest and I will still have my way with them. Now, truth be known, they could tear me up and slice me up one side down the other and wouldn't have to think twice about it, but I still make them believe I can handle them. 
my wife is reminding me every day don't put yourself in the situation your son is bigger than you are now he will take you down I said, and she says, I know you'll be playing, but he'll take you down. I says, I'm still daddy. He'll lay over that bed, and I'll wear him out in my belt, too. Your family. Especially if they don't understand the household of faith, they will oftentimes ridicule us. But not just the brothers. Let's look at another group or another individual that challenged David. Verse number 33. And Saul, King Saul said to David, let no man's heart fail because of him. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 33. Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. Wouldn't, wouldn't you love somebody to tell you you were too young to do anything for Jesus tonight? Well, let's face it. We've all said that to somebody. Can they really do that? Are they old enough to... I'm struggling with that right now in the decision... And I need to make and something I'm dealing with in my life. And I am teetering back and forth on is he old enough or is he not? The king of Israel says thou art but a youth. The implication from that statement in verse 33 says you're too young to be successful. Son, you don't have enough, enough of, uh, of water under the bridge. You're still... You ever heard this one? You're still wet behind the ears. Oh, I heard that. I hated that statement. I'm preaching from example. Preaching from experience. Because I remember being the manager of the office and the youngest one in the building. It's not a fun place to be. When everybody was older than I was, and some of them were the age of my parents, and yet I was the one that was responsible for giving the orders of the hour and the orders of the day. And I can understand a little bit about what David might have felt because he was being ridiculed because he was too young, according to King Saul. He was being ridiculed. He was being challenged because of his age. See, I believe if you ever break the will of a student, you've broke them. One thing we should do in every one of our students' lives, our teenagers, our young people, is we should do all we can to build them up in Jesus. And when they fall, we should be the first one there to love on them. But what happens in life because people are mean and the world is even meaner than, than we realize sometimes is they'll do just what Saul did to David. We'll, we'll say things and, and it's happened to us, it's happened to you when we will be, we, we will be, we will be one that is challenged. Uh, we will be challenged by age discrimination. We'll have people say, but they're but a youth. They can't do that. There is a perking almost being 40. Usually there's people younger than you everywhere you go. You're not, you're not the youngest anymore. And I like that part of being almost 40. I don't deal with this as much as I used to. But David, being a young lad, a young shepherd, is being ridiculed not just by anybody. I mean, the family has already called him worthless. But now the king is saying, boy, you can't even do this. Be careful. The third group tonight that challenged David. David was being challenged by Goliath himself. Look at verse number 43, 1 Samuel 17, 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. It was bad enough that David's been challenged by his brothers. It's bad enough that David has been challenged by the king but now we find that David is being challenged by his very enemy and he says to that, to that young lad am I a dog? the implication son boy you're out of your league here you are looking at a man who can chew you up and spit you out you know I've often wondered Scripture doesn't tell us. Scripture actually leads me to believe the different direction, but I wonder if there was ever a hint of hesitation in David's mind. I don't, I don't believe there was. The reason I believe that is because what Scripture says, but you know how it is. Even when you're prayed through and ready to go, you still realize that that wall is right there, and if God ain't with you, you're going to run right into it in just a moment. And the enemy of David's soul 
that area of his life, that battle he was fixing to fight, looked at him and said, Am I a dog? Are you kidding me? My son, I've got enough ability to chew you up and, sp I've said it already, spit you out. Can I tell you the devil would love to do that to some of you tonight? Chew you up and, and some of you feel like he's done that this week to you or last week or in the last few weeks. Uh, can I tell you you're no different than David? Hang on. I'm going to get us through this tonight. David was challenged by an insult from Goliath. Have you ever been insulted? Have you ever, some, had, ever had someone insult you? I remember a statement I made very, very vividly to my to my manager many years ago. The year was probably 1997. A long time ago. And I was in that position of management. Everybody that worked for me was older than I was. I literally was the youngest staff member in the Gainesville branch there for a while. And there was a staff of about 20 of us. That's just an awkward place to be. And looking back on it, it was a great growing time. But I really wouldn't wish that on my worst. It's just a hard place to be in, in, in business. But I remember talking to my boss and saying to him, I just don't know if I can do this. I had been challenged not only with some things in my own branch, but my former manager in the other branch who was now I was an equal with had said some things that hurt me very badly. He didn't agree with some of my decisions, and, and I respected him as being my former boss, but now I wasn't equal. I just, it, just, it, just, it, it just insulted me. It, qu it made me question everything about myself. And I remember saying to my boss, I don't know if I can do this. And if he was here tonight, I would tell him and tell you, I remember his words, hang in there. It'll be all right. I held on to that for years. Times change, things happen, we grew through it. Some of those people left, other people came, and, uh, and, and I got older every single year, and that helped a little bit too. And I said, I understand a little bit about the, the challenges that David went through. Let's talk spiritually. Those of you that have been saved less than a year, sometimes you don't know if you have the ability to handle what the, what the enemy's trying to bring your way. Can I tell you, God knows exactly where you're at. God knows exactly. Just like he had been preparing David, just like he had been helping David, just like he's helped me and he's helped others, he will help you in that time and hour of need. It does not matter how long I've been serving Jesus. The enemy, the Goliath of our life is out to destroy us but I've come by to tell you tonight you don't have to worry amen I've read all of it tonight let's look at let's look at David's response first point tonight was Goliath's challenge give me a man the second part of this tonight was David's challenge by his brothers and by Saul and by Goliath the, the third part of this tonight is I want to look at David's response how you respond it's often an indication of how soon you'll get your victory. Listen to this. David's response. First of all, he recognized that there was a powerful enemy that he was going to fight. Who was that enemy? Goliath. Listen to what he said. Verse 45. Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield. You can never underestimate your enemy. David did not make light of who he was fighting. David never said, you're a nobody. David never said, you don't have the ability. No contrary to that. David said, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a shield. What David is saying, he is given recognition that he knows Goliath is able to use that sword, that spear, and that shield. And you need not think that you're a match all by yourself for the enemy of your soul. You're not. Never underestimate the enemy and the power of that enemy. Well, Pastor, we're supposed to live a life of victorious joy and happiness. We are. But it's not in us. It's in Jesus. Pastor, we're supposed to keep him under our feet. We are. But not because of our own strength. Because of Jesus. 
And David is saying, I can never underestimate the power of Goliath. Goliath has, ha, has a reputation. Goliath, uh, his image is known, uh, and he knows how to use that spear and that sword uh, and that shield. Uh, and can I tell you, if you try to fight the enemy of your soul all alone, he will chew you up and spit you out. David's response, he recognized the powerful enemy. Number two in this area, David recognized God's intervening power listen to verse number 45 as well the, the rest of it the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel David said to the Philistine you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel see it's not in my ability and church frankly it's not in your ability either it's by his anointing and power that we even can really put one foot in front of the other God's hand rested upon David God's hand rested upon the affairs of David and God's hand will rest upon the affairs of my life and your life if we'll simply recognize that God has the way that the power to intervene in our situation story from this week I don't know if it was God or not but we gave God credit for it I don't think nothing's wrong with that Cherry's bug a few weeks ago probably two weeks ago threw a check engine light well in my brain I just begin to see dollar figures Volkswagen diesel I'm not sure why I even got involved in this but dad gave it to her so I'm believing it's a blessing but I'm just you know I'm, I'm thinking money, 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 money. So I thought, well, I better get this thing looked at. So I took it up there, and they ran a little diagnostic on it at one of the parts houses. And they said, uh, you having problems with it running? Is it running rough? I said, no, not really. It sounds pretty good. And I said, I'm, you know, just kind of out of my league here. They said, well, it's showing that glow plug four is bad, misfiring. I said, okay. She said, you might want to get it looked at. I said, okay. So I went by a second place, and Say, can y'all look at this? Well, it'd be $99. I'm not paying 99 bucks to look at it. Just tell me, you know, what, what this, you know. So I didn't, I didn't do any more with them. I took it by the mechanic that does stuff for our church. And uh, I talked to him before about this vehicle. And I said, hey, I got a problem. You think you could look? He says, Pastor, as I told you before, it's just, it's kind of out of our league. It's a Volkswagen. It's a diesel. We just don't deal with that kind of stuff. How about taking it up the road? The place he told me I had actually heard of, and I had talked to them, it's in Winter Garden called Jason's Bug Ranch. Okay? All this guy does is work on Volkswagen Bugs. Well, he has a few other cars, but you go up to the shop. So I drove up there for the first time yesterday, and I told him what I had, and I said, um, I, I was wondering if you could maybe look at it, tell me what you do, can I get in it? He said, are you in it now? I said, that's right out front. Pull it around back, and we'll look at it. Oh, oh Lord. I see dollar figures. <laughs> He hooked up to the computer. They spent about 45 minutes on it. And, uh, and it was. I mean, I looked at all the bugs. They had new bugs and old bugs and bugs with no guts. I mean, it was just a mess up there. It was crazy. And, uh, the, old, the old bugs, the new bugs. And so he, uh, after about 45 minutes, and I'm thinking, my goodness, if they charge 100 bucks an hour, I'm, I'm in trouble here because I don't have a clue. He says, well, we did get the same message that they got at the other shop. He said, but we, and I watched them. I mean, I stood right there and watched everything they'd done. We, we checked every one of the glow plugs. They had the little ometer or whatever to amplify. I don't know what it is. They checked them. He says, we cannot get it to misfire at all. It's reading perfect. He says, it could have just been a glitch in the system. He said, it could have been a short. You hit a bump. It could have been anything. He said, we're going to, he said, this will reset it because we've taken it and we've checked it and it's going to reset it. If it comes on again, just bring it by. Well, now, it would not come on immediately. You train the car up and you'd put it and give it about three minutes, it would be on. I thought, okay, we'll see how far I get down the road with this thing. I drove it all the way back. It's not been on. She drove it, we drove it home last night. She's driven it today. It's not. Now, it might be on tomorrow, but it ain't on tonight. I told her all this because she knew. She said, Dad, I'm concerned about driving it. I don't want to mess it up. And she said, I said, I'll, I'll handle it. You know how dads are. We'll handle it. Thinking, dear God, I ain't got no money to handle much of it. You can fix it. So I told her all of this after church last night, or after, after school yesterday, before prayer meeting. I said, I just believe God touched it. And she says, Dad, I do too. 
and she's just been happy as a lark today. I mean, that, that, there's no check engine light on. And I said, you know, I still believe God intervenes in our circumstances. I could give you story F, but that's the one from this week, okay? Where God just shows up and proves to you and anybody that will listen to you that he is still on time. And David found himself in a situation where he has recognized the power and the ability of the enemy. He did not make light of Goliath. He did not say he wasn't a warrior. We know Goliath is a warrior. But in the same breath that David recognized the power of his enemy, David also recognized that God is an intervening God. And I said, Lord... I'm not here to say my battle doesn't exist. God, I'm not here to say my enemy is of no value. No, I'm in a battle and the enemy I'm fighting is a very good warrior if I look at it through his eyes. But God, in the same breath that I recognize my enemy, I also give praise and honor and glory to you, realizing that you can intervene and at the speaking of a word, you can change the whole situation. God's hand rested upon the affairs of men. Next one. David recognized his own dependence. Not independence, but dependence. Listen to the rest of verse 45. I come to thee in the name of the church of God. And don't say that. As good as the church of God is, there's some things they can't do for me. It doesn't say I come to you in the name of of whoever put a blank there just put in a name it, it's not he says I come to you in the name of the Lord there are sometimes it's just battles that you and God's got to fight all by yourself and there's people around David watching there's people on the hillside watching there's people in your life watching the battle that you're running through and they're trying to figure out how you're going to survive this and you've recognized the ability of the enemy you've recognized that God intervenes and you need to have enough faith and enough boldness in your life to realize that it's not by man's might it's not by man's power but it is by the spirit of God and you can look at that battle that you're fighting and do just what David said and said I come to thee in the name of the Lord. God that has never failed me. A God that has never left me without food on the table and clothes on. A God that will even show up in the midnight hour. Listen, David recognized his own dependence. We need to become dependent one more time on the Lord. Oh, it's all about me. No, it ain't about you, honey. I tell folks uh, when I'm teaching um, business settings, I would remind them that we are a team. And there's no I in team. And for those smarties in class, they'll say, no, there's no I in team, but there sure is a me, M-E. It ain't about I and it ain't about me. It's about God. And sometimes we get confused. And we think we can do it all on our own. I'm telling you, I can't do it without God. I, can, I don't even want to get up and go outside the house without God. I told him in prayer, I think it was last night I was in prayer, I said, God, I don't even want to try to do anything without you. And I, I went as far as to say, I don't know how people survive without you, Lord. I want him to recognize, and I want the world to recognize, I am dependent upon the Lord. David said, it's not by might. He didn't use those words but I come to thee in the name of the Lord. It's not by my might, but if we win this, it's going to be all God. Lastly, in this area, David recognized his source of victory. Listen to what he said in verse number 47. The battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Now, I thought the wording there was very interesting. The battle is the Lord. David is saying the battle is the Lord's. David goes on to say, and he will give you, Goliath, into our hands. Not my hands. You're right. You're on it. Not my hands. It's not mine. I'm just an instrument. I'm, I'm just a vessel. I, I'm just a, a willing soldier in the army of the Lord. And David said, this is the Lord's battle, and he will give you into our hands. 
whose hands? The Lord's hands and David's hands. Not David's hands. David didn't want anything to do with Goliath by himself. David realized from the very beginning that Goliath was a man of war. But he said, this battle is the Lord's. David knew that God was going to give Goliath into their hands. The Lord is a Lord that is to be trusted. Now we've preached David. I've heard it from new services all the way up to senior adult retreats. David's a good, a good, a good one to preach. I mean, any preacher could preach David if they're half a preacher at all. It's just filled up with stuff of faith. I'm reminded tonight that David had some real struggles. David had his own family against him. David had the king against him. David had Goliath who was his enemy against him. And through it all, David had enough of God about him that said, this battle's not mine anyhow. It belongs to the Lord. Now time won't allow me, but let me spend a few moments on this. Remember what king said to him? Put on my stuff and, and, and let that help you. And what did David say? I, I haven't proved this, king. This stuff don't fit. I don't know how it works and I can't use it. That's my own interpretation but then he reminded he says king I don't know but I reminded I was in the backfield can I say in the wilderness can I go as far as to say king when I was in the wilderness with those few sheep my brother were talking about a few moments ago and the bear came the lion came the Lord just handled it with me and we took care of that I slew that bear and I slew that lion and we don't talk about that much in those points that I gave you tonight but those kind of things in our life build up memorials or build up areas of remembrance. That way, when I face Goliath tomorrow, I can say, yep, I'm facing Goliath. I know who he is. I know he's a man of war. I know the church doesn't understand. I know my family doesn't understand. I know the king doesn't understand. But I remember God was with me yesterday in the back of the nowhere. And God helped me get the lion out of the bear's mouth. I mean the lamb out of the bear's mouth and the lamb out of the lion's mouth. And if God helped me yesterday, he certainly will help me today. The battle's not mine. It belongs to the Lord. The battle does not belong to me. I'm going to preach to myself for a moment. Thomas, the battle's not yours, Pastor. Let God deal with it. Because some of you are just like I am. Want to fix it yourself. We can't. I told somebody just recently, if I could get everybody saved, I would. I'd open up the backside of them, reprogram them, slap it shut, and they would never miss another service ever again in their life. Problem is, I can't do it, and you can't either. But if I can remember, the battle is not mine. Let me, let me help you with this. Sister Wendy, come help me. God is still looking for men and women, young and old, with whom He can share His victories and his triumphs with. See, it's not, my, it's, not, it's not my battle. And if it's not my battle, then it certainly can't be my victory and it certainly can't be my triumph all to myself. When I realize it's the Lord's battle and I realize it's his victory and I realize it's his triumph and I realize he's allowing me to share that with him, it puts a whole new perspective on life. It's not mine. It's the Lord's. The good, the bad, and the ugly is not mine, Sister Edna. It belongs to Him. The battle's His. The victory's His. The triumph's His. The whatever it I'm going through, it does not belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. Now that takes a mindset change. That's different than the world teaches. They teach, give me, give me, give me. It's all mine, mine, mine. But when I got saved, it's not mine anymore. I've given him my everything. I belong to him. And I, through that example and through that kind of life, uh, I realize that I'm just a part of the army of God. And God is looking for men and women, young and old, that he can share his victories and triumphs with. See, when he finds that man or woman, I will tell you that man or that woman, that individual will most likely every single time represent a family. And when Pastor Rick wins a battle, his family wins the battle. When Brother Renfro wins a battle, his family wins the battle. When Brother Ben wins a battle, 
his family wins the battle. When Brother Petrie wins the battle, his family, and so forth and so on. Why? Because each of us represent a family tonight. And when, God, and when we realize that God is going to use us, and when we realize that God will allow victories to come our way, it will impact our families. Have you ever thought about what the brother said to David at the next time they were together at a meal function around the big table at the house? Now see, I would have had to say something like, Big buddy, I don't appreciate... Now this is just me. This is not David. He is much more spiritual than I am. I would have said something like, Big buddy, I don't really appreciate you telling me to go back to the wilderness and handle those few sheep. Obviously, I was where I was supposed to be because God gave me the victory. Now that wouldn't have been very nice to say. Could you imagine what it would have been to go back to King Saul and say, King... I always need all that stuff you got for me. Just the man side of us. When I realize it's not even my battle to begin with, it changes the whole outlook on life. When I realize it's God's victory, God's triumph, God's battle, God's win, God's everything, then I don't care what they think about me or not, Sister Edna. I'm just going to trust the Lord. He got me through this battle, and Brother Pete, I'll have a battle tomorrow, and God will get me through that battle as well. God's just waiting for us. God's waiting for us to become like David when we recognize who we are and who Christ is. And every time there's a victory, every time there's a triumph, the circle in which that triumph and that victory impacts is often more than just the individual that was involved. It builds strength. It builds faith. We're in this concept of refocus and faith and family and finances and fellowship. And you want to get my faith activated? You tell me something good that God's done in your life where God has moved in a situation that it had to be God. That'll build faith in your neighbor. That'll build faith in your family. Oh, what about when God shows up in the midnight hour and you're, you're waiting for a song in the night and in the middle of that midnight hour, God springs forth and gives you an answer. It builds faith. If you allow me to speculate a little bit more, do you think people were as quick to tell David he couldn't fight anymore? Probably not. Do you think the king was as quick to say, I'm not sure you can do that, young man? Probably not. Why? Because David understood something that we fail to understand sometimes. David said, it don't belong to me. It all belongs to you, Lord. And tonight, I think some of us need to get a hold of that again. No matter what battle, no matter what trial, no matter what, what situation, you need to realize it's not yours. It belongs to God. It's not yours. It's God's. Let Him fight the battle. Let Him make the decision. Let Him guide you. And not only will it affect you, well, it will affect those that you come in contact with. And we can be like David. I, I love the closing of it. We're going to pray in just a moment. I love the closing of it. David takes what he's familiar with. That's a sling and a few stones. Why he chose five stones, only God himself probably knows. We can speculate, and I won't do that tonight. But he puts those stones in, and he takes one of them, puts it in that slingshot. And ever how he's done it before with the bear and the lion and all the practice he's had, he's just done it again. And when he released that stone of all of the places for it to go, it hit Goliath at the right spot at the right time. Now you've got to be careful how people preach this because some will preach it, the stone killed Goliath. The stone did not kill Goliath. The stone knocked him out. We know that. If you read the scripture, you will find that David went to Goliath, took Goliath's own sword, and cut off his head. That's what killed him. Yeah, I cut off your head, you're going to die too. David did it with Goliath's own sword. David was no match for Goliath. History tells us Goliath was huge. History tells us David was scrawny. But when God is involved, it's not your battle, it's God's. And when you give it to God, and you say, God... You want a man or you want a woman. Here I am. Use me. When you do that, 
It's going to be amazing what God can do in your life. Would you come tonight? Let's come and pray. Let's ask God to allow us to be that man or that woman. Let's ask God to use us to be like David, to be one that's willing to trust you, trust you, God, in everything that you've asked of us. Father, we love you tonight. Father, as they're moving from the pews to the altars, I pray as they take a step out of that pew, God, let it be symbolic of them coming to the battlefield. Let it be symbolic of them coming to fight. Let it be symbolic of us tonight giving our life to you and saying, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Lord, I'm here. I'll be the man. We'll be the family. We'll be the women of God. We'll be the men of God that you have called us to be. Lord, we recognize our enemy, but I refuse to lay down and let him reign God the battle's not mine the victory's not mine it all belongs to you lead us tonight I pray help us tonight I pray God help us tonight Lord without a doubt to know that you're on the throne help us tonight God to realize if we'll be the men and women you called us to be you will certainly be God help us tonight I pray God help us tonight I pray help us tonight I pray God hallelujah Lord, let us know without a doubt that you're with us. Lord, let us know that you're with us in the battle. Let us know that you're with us in the battle. God, the enemy's come, but I give my life to you. Lord, the enemy's come, but I give the battle to you tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. And touch the Lord as he goes by. Reach out. Touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart cry. He's passing by the small man your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He the Lord as he goes by reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry he's passing by this moment your needs to Supply, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's past. By this moment, your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy. the Lord as he goes by reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry he's passing by this moment your needs to 
touch the Lord as he goes by. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. For you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Well, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Oh, you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. Passing by this moment, your needs to supply. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Aren't you thankful He's in the battle with us? Aren't you thankful you don't even have to own the battle tonight? You can give it to the Lord. It's no longer mine, it's His. I'm going to let him deal with it. Amen. Share with you the part about the light going off in the car. Can I tell you the rest of the story? We got done with that 45-minute event. I said, how much do I owe you? Oh, we don't charge for that. Go on and have a good day. I said, God, thank you. Got to trust him. Got to give it to him. And God realized that I couldn't do a thing about it, but he could. Amen. Stories upon stories like that build our faith stories about that in the Bible where God's just showed up out of nowhere and done the miracle, build our faith say so God I want to be a family of faith not a family of worry and concern and doubt, I want to be a family of faith I believe we're going to do that this year, amen Father we love you tonight, thank you for the family of God thank you Lord for those that have chosen to gather together to fellowship one with another. Go with us from this place. Bring us back for the events of this week. Back for worship on Sunday. And we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Christ we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. Fellowship with those around you. God bless you.